There's nothing quite like the forecast for the first snowfall of the year, is there? Along with the promise of new outdoor activities in the snow, there's also the opportunity to stay cozy indoors and do a little watercolor painting. Hi, I'm Michelle Cooper and welcome to my studio. In this watercolor tutorial, I will show you how to use one brush, a silver black velvet travel brush, size number six, and one color of any black that comes with a set of watercolors, and then combine some fun gestural watercolor marks. We can indicate clothing, action, gestures, and people playing in the distance and in the foreground of a snow day. First I start with the largest shape which is the torso including the clothing. Then I put in the legs to indicate um, the proportion and when they're in the snow everybody's wearing a lot of layers of clothing so you can really puff this all up. And then lastly I'll put in the head. And uh, I want the head to be relatively small compared to the many layers of winter clothing that they're wearing. And then maybe just a little extra water in the brush to give some of the snow that they're standing in here. So these first two figures here will be kind of the middle size ones. So there's not quite too much detail going not a lot of light and shadow. I could lift out a little bit of light like I did just now with a thirsty brush. That's a brush which you get rid of all the paint in and then dab it on the sponge and then lift off the color. And then uh, maybe just thin out the wash just a little bit to get a different value, a different lightness or darkness in this second figure. Again, starting with the bulk of the largest shape with the big jackets and coats and sweaters that they wear. And just play around with some shapes here. I don't really have in mind anything in particular except to do the torso. And um, in this case, I think that's going to be a scarf instead of the arms there. Add a little extra paint to make it darker for maybe the skirt underneath here. And then... Um, Get the, I usually do the head last all the time. I know some people do the head first, but for me it works out better to just do the head last. Now let's see, add a little, few little edges here. Maybe make some shadows. Darken this up just a little bit. I'm not really, again, doing anything in particular. I'm just making marks here, but they all seem to work out as far as the uh, general look of things. The two legs, let's make a different shape of legs for this person. Just, again, put a little snow at the bottom here. Maybe I'll add just a few, maybe I'll just add a few little marks up here, change the colors. As things get dry, they get a little bit lighter. There was some fringe on the scarf. How about that? Okay, and there we have our two middle size, middle distance figures. Now to make figures look like they're in the distance, you're still gonna put their heads at the same level, but you're going to make them lighter so that they look like they're farther away and smaller. This time I'm starting out with the legs uh, and then I'm going to put the heads on at the last. Again, we're going to start out with some lighter values in here. And then you can see how shiny the paint is there. It's still very wet. So I'm going to let things sort of bleed together. There's going to be less detail in the distance figures than there were in the middle distance. And then coming up the foreground, that gives us three different spaces of perspective. Always keeping the heads at approximately the same level unless they're on a hill 
uh, hit farther away. You know, one little hat here. Well, these are fiddly little pieces, but I think they came out pretty good. Now, for the figures in, that are in the foreground, they have to be larger, more detailed, maybe more light and shadow happening on there. And this is going to be a big puffy jacket here. Maybe we've got his shirt sticking out. Make sure all your edges aren't um, hard edged and they're not all the same values in the um, bulk of the shapes too. Okay, this guy's gonna have a different stance altogether. Maybe he's getting ready to throw a snowball or something. keep these loose and suggestive then it's really much more fun for the viewer to kind of imagine in what some of these random loose lines are and shapes. Get some boots on him here. Maybe uh, there's a big slushy bit of snow underneath here. Okay, let's get a friend for him here. Similar but different. It's nice to kind of connect them together like one is in front of the other or one's behind the other too. Different leg shapes here for this guy. This is where a, a real expressive brush like this one comes in handy. It's a pointed round brush and so you can get broad shapes very quickly by pressing harder and then very th thin and small lines as well by just using that very fine pointed tip. Let's see. He's not gonna have he's not gonna have the same hat. Let's just put the back of his head on here. Could use a little probably a little darker paint too. Let's get the right size here and shape. There we go, that's good. We're doing everything with just this one color, so the lightness and darkness of the values are very important to pay attention to. As you can see, there's three different stages of details happening in each of these perspectives for the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. So I see some of these washes have gotten lighter as they dried, which is typical of watercolor. So I'll put a few extra dark marks in there for accents. And we're all finished. I'm using a smoother surface paper, Fabriano Studio, which shows the marks more clearly than a softer surfaced sizing paper like Arches, 140 pound cold press paper, which picks up more texture. Also, I'm adding colors from the landscape and the figures rather than just black. Now you can use your figures as a focal point and a color accent in a more developed watercolor painting. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.